Hello, my name is Lynn Jeffries and I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Rehabilitation Sciences at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. My colleagues and I completed a paper that is in this next journal of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology from the ONTRAC study. The title of the study is Physical, Occupational, and Speech Therapy for Children with Cerebral Palsy. The study was funded by the Canadian Institute of Health Research and the U.S. Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute. We know that decision-making regarding the effective and efficient amount of therapy services for children with cerebral palsy, the focus of those services, and how those services are provided is very complex. The aim of this study was to describe the amount, the focus, and the extent to which the services were family-centered, as well as the extent of how, of how well the child services met the family's needs, and their relationship developmental outcomes of balance, walking endurance, and participation in family and recreational activities and self-care activities over a one-year period. This prospective cohort study had five, 656 children with cerebral palsy included in it, and data collection began um, and data collection was in the US and Canada. Trained therapists completed the data collection at baseline and one year later. The measures used in this study were the early clinical assessment of balance, the six minute walk test, the therapist completed those at the home or at the community center where the children were seen. Parents then completed the child engagement and daily life measure looking at participation in family and recreational activities and at performance and self-care. The parents also completed a questionnaire that looked at physical, occupational, and speech therapy services, the focus of those services, the family-centeredness of those services, and the parents' uh, report of how well those services were meeting their needs. The parents and the therapist then collaboratively classified the children using the gross motor function classification system. Children's progress on the different outcome measures were transcribed and, and developed and centile graphs were created for each of the outcomes based on GMFCS levels. The child's score at baseline was subtracted from their score at 12 months to determine that one year percentile change score. Those percentile change scores were then classified either as less than expected meaning they changed less than the 10th percentile compared to peers, as expected between the 10th and 90th percentile compared to peers, or more than expected, which is greater than the 90th percentile compared to peers. Data was analyzed using multinomial regression models. In the relationships of service, the amount, the focus, the extent that therapy services were meeting the family's need and family-centeredness to the outcomes of balance, walking endurance, and participation, using their percentile categories of progressing more than expected or less than expected to the reference category of as expected were explored. In total, 11 separate models were examined. There were no significant relationships of services to the balance measure ECAB. For the walking endurance measure, children receiving family-centered services to the greatest extent are only 16% as likely to progress in the less than expected category in walking as compared to other children with a lower family-centered um, expected amount of services. With regards to participation, when the effect size of, was calculated for children, they were almost four times more likely to progress more than expected when services were provided in a family-centered manner. And when the family services were meeting the family's needs, they were additionally four times as likely to be progressing more than expected in the area of participation. When the services focused on structured play and recreational activities, the child was 2.5 times more likely to progress more than expected in the area of participation. And when services were focused on the child's health to the greater extent, they were only 60% as likely to progress less than expected in the area of participation. When examining self-care, children with a greater focus on health during therapy services were almost three times as likely to, three times more likely to, pro, 
to be progressing more than expected compared to those children whose therapy services did not focus on health care. When looking at limitations, the service data was collected from parents rather than directly from the therapists. Therefore, they re represent the estimates of the parents' perspectives and may not reflect how the therapist would report the services they were providing. Additionally, the service data did not include specific activities and interventions, nor the level of the child's participation or engagement in those activities. Therefore, additional information is needed to assist in a more in-depth analysis of child outcomes. Based on the results of this study, family-centered rehabilitation therapy services were positively associated with greater participation of the children in the area of family and recreation activities and as well as walking endurance. Parent perception that rehab therapies met the child's needs was associated with better perception in better participation in family and recreational activities. Also, structured play and recreational activities as well as health and well-being health and well-being were important for self-care and participation when we are planning rehabilitation therapy services. In this study, the amount of rehabilitation therapy services was not related to the developmental outcomes we examined. However, further study is always needed and additional information would support further analysis. I want to thank you for your time, and once again, this article is published in the Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology Journal in uh, issue in January 2020. Thank you.